Tanya for the fourth day of Tammuz, Dalit Tammuz, <coughs> is in Pedic Yud Aleph of Shara Yichud Vemuna. It's on page 176. The number at the bottom of the page is 336. We are four lines from the bottom. The Alter Rebbe is saying that just as the Midas, the attributes, are one with God, and they are called attributes, they're given particular names, Chesed, Gvura, Teferes, and so on, only relative to us, but in God they are all one, they are one with God, the same is true also of the letters and the words which God uses to create the world. We call it letters, we call it words, but in truth they are one with God. Why is it called speech? It is called speech because speech expresses the, the, the notion of revelation. When a person speaks, he's basically revealing what is already there, only hidden. And through speaking, it brings it from its hiddenness into the revealed state. So the, the use of the metaphor of speech is that speech is the, is the channel through which that which is hidden comes out into the open. And within the Milo, with God also, from the emotion which creates, as for example, Chesed creates water, or Chesed creates light, what determines whether the light will be created or the water will be created? It is the form, the channel, through which this attribute, this Chesed, is going to show itself. And when it shows itself, it takes on either the form that will produce water or a form that will produce light. So if it takes on the forms, the images of the letters Aleph, Vav, Reish, then it will produce light. If it takes on the form of Mayim, Yud, Mem, Yud, Mem, then it will produce water. Four lines from the bottom. Av al is, but the truth is that Bechin, Asayis, Yis, Hadib, that the letters, this concept of expression through letters of speech, when we when we apply it to God, He We're calling it speech, but in fact, it is much higher, infinitely higher than the intelligence of the created being. Shaharei, how do we see this? In the statement and in the letters of the words, Nasa Adam Betzalmenu, let us make man in our image. Through those words, through those letters, Nivra Adam, the human being was created. And the human being is Baal Chachma Vaseichu. So where did our intelligence come from? From the words, let us make man. So those words, those letters, are higher, infinitely higher than our intelligence in that those letters created our intelligence. Our intelligence comes from those letters. Not only the words and the letters, but even the breath itself. What we, what we describe as the divine breath, that too is higher than our intelligence, because it too creates our intelligence. As it's written, that by breathing, by exhaling, he created the human, the, the soul. And the soul is an intelligent soul. We're not talking about the essence of the soul, which is, higher than, which is also higher than intelligence. We're talking about the faculties of the soul. So we see that the divine speech and even the divine breath that they, the words and the breath, are the source of the wisdom and intelligence of the human being, of the first human being. And in that first neshama, the neshama of Adam, there, there was the presence of all neshames, of all tzaddikim. And they, the tzaddikim, are greater and higher than the angels, and therefore their wisdom is higher than the angels. So if the wisdom of the tzaddikim is created by the speech, 
and the speech is higher than their wisdom, then the divine speech is, in, is cert, even more so, higher than the intelligence of the angels. So why is it that way? That, the, that speech, which is usually a description of that which is lower than intelligence, the expression of the intelligence, and here we're saying that it is higher than, than the intelligence, it's because the letters of God's speech they are an expression and a channeling of energy and life from God's attributes and these attributes are the attributes are one with God in an absolute oneness and he himself, God himself, is infinitely higher than Chachma, than even the realm of, of Seichel, Shabin Evrayim. And therefore, the letters which are an expression of the Midas, which are one with God, who is higher even than the intelligence, Chachma, which is the highest level of, of the created being, and therefore we don't use the analogy of letters and of speech we don't mean to say that when we, de- when we describe God as speaking we don't mean that this activity, speech is lower than human intelligence the reason we use the, the analogy and the metaphor of speech is because the divine speech is lower than the divine attributes, but not lower than the human attributes. <clears throat> and what is what what does the speech consist of? The speech is the combinations of the twenty two letters. That, that make up 22 different channels of, of life and, and, and energy. With which, through these 22 channels, all worlds are created, the, lower wor- the higher world and the lower world. In other words, the world of Atsilus and, and the lower three worlds. The Chol Habriyim Shebeteicham and everything that exists within them. It's because it is the divine will to create the world necessarily dafka with 22 channels for creation, not more than 22 and not less. The hein hein chov bezeisis hakluyes bepevaloshin, and these are the 22 letters that. Are, that are established, that are implanted in the mouth and in language, in the, in the tongue, in speech. Kedetnan b'seifa yitzira, as we learn in the seifa yitzira. Utmonosam b'ksav, this is when, it, when a person speaks them, these letters. When they are spoken, they make up the, uh, the faculty of speech. When they are written, utmonosam b'ksav, when they are formed in writing, he made the of the Kamon. The Al is saying that these letters, the twenty two letters, do not come into existence when the mouth forms them and speaks them, although we said earlier that the letters are formed by the five tools of articulation. But here the Al is emphasizing that that doesn't mean that the mouth creates the letters. The, the letters are dependent on the mouth to form them, but not to create them. Where do the letters come from? The letters come from the essence of Chachma, from the Neshama itself. It's only that they are, they are planted or implanted in the mouth. And therefore, they are an appropriate analogy, an appropriate muscle for the creative powers that flow from the divine attributes with which God creates the world. 
because that flow is coming from the attribute itself and the letters which we speak and even which even when it is written as we write them they too come not from the mouth or from the hand when it's written they come from the attribute itself from the essence of the attribute and even higher from the essence of the seichel how is it that in writing we, we have any indication that the letter is coming not from the hand and the activities of the hand but is coming from the seichel it's we see it because he made out even in the written word we find the, that it expresses the concept it expresses the idea so obviously it is flowing from the idea not from the hand so we see that the letters of, of speech and of thought as they are in the human that the letters of speech and of thought are coming from the seichel and the, and the midis of the nefesh itself and not only from some lower aspect of them but from the essence of the Seichel and the Midas, and as will be explained in another place. In the Hayyim Yayim, for the fourth day of Tammuz, for Dalit Tammuz, the Rebbe writes that one Chosid, or one student, one Talmud, who devotes his heart, his mind, and his soul to Teva, and to supporting the study of Teva, brings wonderful benefits in a, even to a big city in all the city's affairs in such a manner that transcends the natural order the, the, the wonders and the benefits that he brings to the city are, are even supernatural miraculous and this is by the merit of our patriarchs who are called the fathers of the world